So this is a small high level overview of WebAssembly, how this works. Now the big question is, will Wasm actually replace JavaScript eventually? In this video, we'll discuss about WebAssembly, what does it mean and is it the future of web development? If yes, how you can get started with it today. Let's just go ahead and take a look at Wasm in a bit more detail. This video is a part of CodeDamp's t-shirt giveaway program for the month. If you want to take part and win an amazing CodeDamp t-shirt, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it, you are eligible. If your comment gets a heart from CodeDamp, you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free. So for quite some time now, I have been including WebAssembly in almost all of the videos which I do in terms of front-end and the future of technologies. But this is true because WebAssembly is a very practical way of gaining speed in certain parts of your code where computation matters. Let's just understand how that works. So you see the JavaScript code which you write is slow. And the reason this is slow is because JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. That means this code, whatever code you write here, would be run by a V8, which is a virtual machine sort of thing, which compiles your code and understands it and does all of that stuff on the runtime. So all of this happens on the runtime as your program is running. And then this goes to the machine code where the computer actually executes the instructions. This makes JavaScript a bit slow for CPU intensive tasks, right? So for example, JSON decoding or JSON encoding or some cryptographic things, right? For those things, JavaScript is not the best language for performing those tasks because JavaScript is dynamic. Therefore, we do not have the ability to compile and optimize certain parts beforehand and then run it via V8. So that's why you don't prefer to use JavaScript for heavy CPU bound tasks. The other part of the equation is languages like C++ or Rust, which have pretty much control of the full computer where, where they are running on. And they pretty much just compile down the machine code, which is highly optimized. And then it just directly runs on your hardware, right? So it directly runs on your hardware with all the optimizations, all the speed, everything. But the problem here is there are a bunch of problems. First of all, the browser does not allow running arbitrary code without any sandbox or anything. So this does not happen. So far, the browsers have only allowed running JavaScript and that too in sandbox mode, right? So this is where things get a bit interesting because there's a new player in the town called WebAssembly, which brings a lot of benefits of native compilation to the web. And the way this happens is that these languages get compiled to Wasm. So what you have to understand is Wasm is not a language. I mean, it is technically a language, but it's more suitable as a compiled target, not as a language you would write your code in. For example, you can convert a C++ file or a C file into a .s file, which is an assembly file, but you probably would not be writing an assembly file yourself, right? Similarly, you would not be writing a WSM or whatever the extension for WASM is, I think WASM. You would not be writing this file by hand, although you could technically and compile it then um, into a small binary, but usually WASM is a compiled target. That means you're gonna write certain computation. Let's say you are doing some cryptographic thing or you know, let's take some practical example, FFmpeg. FFmpeg is a piece of software which all it does is just reading a video file, placing, you know, whatever action you want to do on that video, slicing it, forwarding, backing the video, reversing the video, so on, and outputting it. So you give it a video file and you get out a video file or, you know, some audio file or anything, whatever you want. The point here is, this thing is a highly optimized piece of software written in C++. Now, with the help of Wasm, we can compile this software, which is written in C++, into this Wasm binary and then use it on the browser, right? So this means we are indirectly able to use C++ on the browser, but we don't use it directly. Why? Because Wasm also runs inside of a sandbox. So the sandbox, gives you security. So your Wasm code is still not able to do some operating system level exploits because it runs in the same sandbox which the browser gives to the JS, right? 
So this means you can pretty much run a WebAssembly file inside of a web browser and hopefully, I mean, until and unless browsers screw up, in the most cases and pretty much all the cases ideally, your WASM would be, could be anything and it will not cause any security issue. So security is guaranteed with WASM. Performance is also guaranteed because you are technically running, you know, a compiled library, a compiled version of a faster language and this wasm binary right here skips this step where it has to generate an ast and then convert into machine code and then execute it can directly execute on the system right so this gives you performance benefits plus wasm is a, is a is built in such a way that if you have let's say a 5 mb of wasm binary then as it is downloading for example, this chunk is downloaded, which is let's say one MB. As it is downloaded to the client, this can also start executing and you know getting converted into machine code and just start working, right? Without actually downloading the full thing. With languages like JavaScript or for example, a JSON payload, if you're downloading a JSON file, you have to receive the full payload before you can parse this, right? So you have to get, get the full file. But Wasm is designed in a streaming execution manner, right? So it can start working as soon as it starts downloading the first byte. So this is a small high level overview of WebAssembly, how this works. You need a language to compile it to a WebAssembly target. In most of the cases, it's gonna be Rust or C++ or even C, but there's a long list of languages which can support Wasm as a compiled target. Once you find a language, you write the code in a higher language, compile it to a WebAssembly binary and ship it to the browser. FFmpeg is a very practical example of that. That means you can perform FFmpeg-like operations with near native speeds inside of a browser. That means no need to download anything. You can just go ahead and create a SaaS company out of this thing, right? Because this is a powerful tool. Now, the big question is, will Wasm actually replace JavaScript eventually? And the answer here is no, the TLDR version, because Wasm is always, has always been designed to work with JavaScript, not against JavaScript. So what eventually would be happening is that you have a JavaScript thread, which is a single thread, and then from JavaScript, you can initiate Wasm calls. So you can call Wasm binaries from JavaScript. In fact, that's the only way at the moment to call a Wasm function. Then this returns you some result. Then you call it again. This returns you some result and so on, right? So more CPU intensive operations goes to Wasm where you can use a lot of CPU, a lot of performance benefits and so on. And the web facing front, which is the DOM, for example, on the page or, you know, network request or stuff like this, which still needs to happen in the browser world, which is, which is the user facing browser, would be happening inside of the JavaScript world. Wasm right here cannot access DOM, right? So it does not have access to document object model. This means there could be no UI update which could be performed directly by WebAssembly, right? So you need JavaScript for that. Another way you can think about this is CPU versus GPU. So you can think JavaScript as CPU as an analogy and WASM as GPU, right? So sure, GPU has its own speed benefits and things it can do very fast compared to CPU, but CPU has a more general purpose role to play right it's not just about computing the graphics or multiplying two matrices but it's much more about memory management and communicating with different hardware and so on similarly eventually as we proceed as the years pass by we will have a bigger adoption of wasm but at the same time we will see that more critical and things which could be much much faster are shifted to Wasm and JavaScript handles more of the UI side of things, right? So this right here handles part which requires more computation, more power, and JavaScript is more towards, you know, the things which it works the best, which is the dev facing UI, right? So that, that's a bit of an overview of how Wasm and JavaScript work and how they would continue to work in future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you understood and enjoyed WebAssembly. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. I have so much amazing content coming up for you in the coming weeks with a lot of interesting courses released on codelam.com. So please make sure you stay tuned. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon.